For those of you that don't know me, my name is Melissa Arbo, and I own my own company called The Stock Swoosh, and I trade gaps. So I do different lectures about gaps and different things, but today I thought I would talk about last week's uh, options trades, uh, because I know a lot of people love options, they want to do options, and I love options too. I day trade as well, but the nice thing about options is that you can capture overnight moves in the gap. So last week was a week where that occurred. So I thought it was a good week to review gaps specifically, but I do day trade gaps as well. So if you decide and you want to come and trade with me, I do day trades and the trading room is a live room where I do day trades. <laughs> Excuse me. And the options is a newsletter. But it's the same philosophy where I'm rating the gap to determine if I want to trade it or not. And again, I'm trading momentum when I'm trading the gap, whether up or down. Now, again, we've, we're, we've done a few calls recently, not that many, to be honest with you. Uh, we're going to go over, like I said last week, where we had a bunch of puts. So again, I know the market gapped up today. I know the market rallied today. We have a big data point number tomorrow morning, huge actually, before the open. So we could continue. One of two things will happen tomorrow. The market's going to gap tomorrow, and I'm going to go over what a gap is in a minute. Uh, the market's going to either gap up tomorrow, continue higher, or gap down, in which case it could fall. Or the market could gap up and sell off. That's another possibility. So again, we're, we're living through very, very... I don't want to say crazy times, but they, but they are kind of crazy. I mean, when you look at everything that's going on in the world right now, when you look at the hyper focus that we've seen on interest rates and the Fed's moves, inflation again, it's we're, it's an inflation number that's coming out tomorrow morning, and and we're it's like the market wants to see a bad number, uh, so that the Fed will lower rates or something. I mean. Again, it's just, we're living in crazy times right now. So what I do specifically does not really look at the fundamentals of the market or any stock specifically. I'm just looking at the chart. I'm looking at the gap. I go through a process where I rate the gap. And we'll talk about this more at the end, but it, I teach a class once a month. I usually do an online class. I'm not doing a class this month in August because I'm doing a live class in New York City where I live in New York City. I've never done this before. It's a one-time only event. I think it's a great opportunity for people to come and meet me and really to learn the system face-to-face. -face. Obviously, if you're interested, you would have to travel to New York City. And if you're in the, on the Northeast, that's a lot easier. <clears throat> but you can fly here, you can get here, and you'll have an opportunity to learn with me in a three-day class. I usually do a two-day class with the online class, but I'm doing a longer class uh, for the for the live class, which again, we'll talk about that at the end. So if you have any questions, you can just plop it in the room. I will see it as we go along here today. But what I want to do is go over every options trade uh, that I did last week. And I could have done any one of a number of weeks in the last month. Um, but again, it's just to show you an average of winners and losers. Hold on here. We have somebody trying to get in. And again, if you have any questions, you can plop it in the room. Let me just see here. Somebody is trying to get in. Um, and I will see it as we go along. Okay. If you have questions, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can also call me at 929-3200-GAT. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. Okay, so again, why why do you want to trade? I mean, what's the whole purpose of doing it in the first place? When I started out trading, okay, I was actually doing mortgages. And I did live in New York at the time, actually. But you don't have to live in New York to trade. You could live anywhere in the world. And that's the nice thing about trading. All you have to do is open up a trading account. You need live data. You need live charts at a broker. You can trade at a prop broker or a retail broker, and you have to have a system to trade. So it's not like it used to be years ago where you have to go on a trading desk or go to the New York Stock Exchange 
and actually get hired by a company to trade. You're trading your own money when you trade. And again, we get leverage from a broker. Now, we were talking before about the fact that I'm going to go over the options here uh, from last week. Well, options, you don't have to have a margin account. So if you've never traded options before and you want to learn how to do it, you would open up an options account at any retail broker. The minimum's 2000 and you can take the risk and take one contract. You can risk $100, $200, whatever you want to risk. So you are trading options just as a cash position, whatever it costs. It's not the same as a margin account. As I said earlier, I know some of you are coming in late. I like to trade on margin. I like to do day trades. I, I like to do options too. I do both. But it depends how much money you have, how much cash, depending on what type of account you want to set up. Okay. But when I started trading, I wanted to do it for a living. I had that as my mindset. It wasn't like a secondary thing. It was all in for me. I wanted to get out of my mortgage job so badly. I wanted a new career and that was it. So it was like moving forward for me and there was no looking back. And that's kind of how the, the attitude that you have to have when you're trading. So every decision that I make, it doesn't matter if it's a day trade, an option, is based on a system that I created, which took me about three years of my life a little bit more than three years, and I called it the golden gap. Why? It feels like it's finding gold in the market. I will tell you today, we went long Starbucks, it worked. Okay, that was a quick trade you could have done as a day trade, as an option, got in, got out. I got up in the morning and I looked at the daily chart. It was a long, okay, so you would have been a call as an option, I did call calls in it. But it's based on a 26 point professional rating system. Again, I'm mostly short, but I will go long. So again, Starbucks today was a good, a good long. So I'm always going long bullish gaps and I'm always shorting bearish gaps, but I'm not shorting every bearish gap and I'm not going long every bullish gap. For example, we didn't short HDE today. It's a shame it didn't work out right. I saw it this morning and it looked completely different. It's still gapped down, but we didn't do it. <laughs> we didn't do a day trade in it and we didn't do a put in it either. We didn't do anything in it. But the purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. That is like your double, triple check. So you're not wandering around, waiting for the market to open, watching TV, you know, in aimless blind chat rooms, trying to take trade ideas, not knowing what to do, or trying to look at something in two different directions. The checklist helps me stay focused in the morning before the market opens that I know I want to do it or I don't want to do it. And how do I know based on the rating system? And again, if you decide to learn from me and come to class in New York, this is what you're going to learn. The checklist tells you what to trade when and in what direction. So the 26 point checklist predicts directional bias in a stock. Why is that important? Because if a stock is rallying, you're not going to make money if you're shorting it. Consequently, if a stock is dropping, you're not going to make money if you're going long. Again, many traders for some reason have this, you know, buy low, sell high concept. That works for long-term investing. Uh, say something like your retirement account or something. If a stock is dropping and you want to buy it long-term, you think it's going to move up over the next, you know, 20, 30 years, depending on how old you are in something like a long-term investment. That's very, very different than what I do. I'm an active trader. I'm in, I'm out. Even when I'm doing an option, I'm in and out. I could be in and out the same day. I could be in and out in 24 to 48 hours or in a week. Okay, so that's still pretty fast um, when, when you look at trading. Okay, so again, buying low and selling high is the philosophy of Warren, someone like Warren Buffett who has a lot of money and invests in stocks. And he invests in stocks for many, many reasons. Many of them are fundamental. And again, right now, you know, you're seeing different things. Again, I'm talking about, I mentioned HD. Again, we didn't trade that today, but that had earnings this morning. It was down and basically their guidance was, you know, sort of a problem uh, because they were talking about higher prices, inflation, costs having to be passed on to the consumer. And guess what? The possibility of a recession or a slowdown that could affect their bottom line and people wanting to go out and spend money in their homes. You know, when you think about people spending money in their homes and home improvements and things like that, we had a huge, huge, big explosion of that when everybody was locked inside in 2020, 2021, 2022, and people were moving and spending money and fixing up their homes and things. And again, companies like Home Depot, Lowe's, they benefited from that, but things could change. Things could change if we have a crash in the housing market or if in fact, um, you know, we get into a recession. 
which is which is debatable and again nobody knows what's going to happen with that nobody knows yet and any questions as we go along here i'm just going to type a hi right there can everybody see where i said hi if you have questions you can write it in there some of you i know how to chat some of you i think are new can everybody see the hi okay so how do i figure everything out based on the checklist so it's a 26 point checklist and you got to learn what to look for once you learn what to look for then you'll know what to do that is how i make the decisions that is what i do in the morning that's how i knew i wanted to go long starbucks today and again this is what you're going to come and learn from me i teach you the entries i teach you the exits but it's really the checklist that tells me what to look for and that's how i make money in the market and whether you want to do this on the side whether you want to do it part-time or full-time or whatever your reason for doing this is it doesn't even matter in the end how much money you want to make that has to do with how much you risk you will lose even if you have a lot of money if you don't have a strategy that has consistently more winners than losers so at the end of the day you have to no matter even if you have a small account or a big account you still have to have a system to trade that has more winners and losers i talk to people about this all the time they always say well if i had this much money i could make so much more not if you don't know what you're doing not if you don't have a good strategy it has nothing to do with anything you'll just lose more okay so even if you have a small account, you can do well with this. But again, your sizing has to be equal or close to equal in all your trades, and you still have to have a winning strategy. So what I decided to do was go over, and I could have I could have done this. I just didn't have time. I'll do this maybe in the next couple of days for the for the email for those of you that are on the marketing list, or I'll put it on YouTube. I, I used my risk of an advanced trader risk, but I can show you results, like I said, in a couple of days or something with a beginner risk. There's any kind of risk you can take. You could take risk more than I'm risking. I'm using an, a, what I call an advanced trader risk. I've been trading for a long time, like I said, 16 years. So my average risk on my options is around eight grand. You could risk a thousand, you could risk 500, you could risk $200. The point is that your risk needs to be similar or close to equal. Danny, I know we've talked about that with you. And let me see who else is here. Rashish, I see that with you too. Now, I don't know how you're doing with that as well. Uh, again, what do I mean by close to equal? This is not an exact science. If one contract of the SPY costs $500 and one contract of crowd cost $1,000, and I'm just making this up, then again, if your risk is only $500, you can't do the crowd trade. If your risk is 1,000, you would do two spies and one crowd. So you would have different number of contracts per trade. Because when I say it has to be equal to size, I'm talking about the dollars and cents, okay? Does everybody get what I'm saying about that with the consistency? And Sabina, I know you're new too. Do you understand that as well? Okay. All right. So bottom line is when you're looking to do a trade, you want to have similar, similar risk money wise. Okay. It might be the same contracts. It may not. <laughs> like if we get something really cheap that costs like 50 cents, you can do a lot more of this. Okay. So anyways, last week, the win ratio of all the options we did was 77% win ratio. We had 10 winners, zero break-evens, three losers, and we did 13 trades. 13 trades is a lot of trades. Again, I always say to people, pace yourself. So in other words, like if you're like, oh, I can risk $8,000 a trade. Well, are you going to want to be in 13 things at once though? Do you know what I'm saying? So knowing that it's an active newsletter, you should pace yourself with the number of trades you're doing. Like if you're like, oh my God, I can't do 13 trades even if I wanted to. Okay, fine then. Pace yourself. Like if I call, if you say, well, I'm going to do five trades a week. Well, if I call five trades on Monday, don't do them all on Monday. Then you've used up all your trades for the week. And if they don't all go on Monday for you to get out, you can't do any Tuesday. Rashis, are you here? That is my advice for someone like you. So... Again, space yourself out knowing that you may, you know, not want to do all of them, quite frankly. So that's the one thing I wanted to add. How many positions at the same time? Well, it depends how busy of a week we have. 
So again, I last week, I wouldn't even say last week was a busy week. This is, I'm going over last week because this was an average week. I don't think last week was a busy week. There have been weeks where I've done 20 to 30, like earning season. We're still in earning season now, but we're at the end of earning season. We're really at the very, very tail, tail end. So this is, I say, would have been an average rate. So I'm just going to say on average, five to 15 on any given week. Five is probably a slow week. So you're probably gonna get like, like 10-ish, I would say on average. On a busy week, you could get double than that, is my point. And that's what I'm saying, pace it, okay? And again, I didn't have time to do a you know, beginner risk. I'm not trading a beginner risk, but I, I will make the time for that and put it on YouTube or send it in an email in the next few days. I really, really will to help some of you, but th that's not the point of today. Today is to go over what the possibilities exist for those of you that want to trade options. Again, talk about the gaps and then go over how you can take any 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 amount of money you want to risk. If you're utilizing the system, which my system is a winning system, that you if you keep the risk the similar and you book money on trades, you're going to be fine. Because again, we have more winners and losers. And that's what's really, really important, I think, for people to understand. Everybody wants 100% no losers. That's just not realistic. While there are times where I might be on a winning streak and a hot streak and we we go, you know, I don't know, 15, 20 trades with no losers, that's not reality. Eventually, I'm going to have a trade that doesn't work. Again, there were three last week. We're going to go over them here. But the point is that you need to have more winners and losers. And we had some big winners last week, so the monster ones. And that happens too. And anybody that's ever traded with me knows that as well. When you say pace yourself out, which trades to do and which trades to skip? I, I pace myself like what I just said. Like if you say, I want to do, first of all, you have to take the money that you have and say, I'm going to do max this many a week. So that's the first thing. Don't go all heavy in on Monday. That's what I mean by pace yourself. It's not that you're being selective necessarily. It's that you could do one a day or you say, I'm going to do, Again, I'm just making it five a week, which you could say I'm going to do one a day. Or you could say I'm going to do 10 a week. But if I call 10 on Monday, you're not doing all 10. That's what I'm talking about. So the bottom line is pace yourself, which be, means being normal of how many you're going to do a week. We say, well, I'm not even going to do five. I only want to do three. That's all I want to do at once. You say to yourself, okay, fine. Then if I call three on Monday, then you're doing one. And then, then that's it. And then you can wait till you get out of that one till you do the next one. And then, or maybe if I call one Tuesday, you do one on Tuesday. As far as being selective, again, we're going to go over last week's trades. I don't think it's that difficult because you can tell what I'm calling trades. And again, Rashish is on the letter. You can tell what I'm calling trades. If I call a Q and a SPY and an Apple and a Microsoft, you know, that's probably with the market direction, Rashish. So a Q and the SPY is basically like the same thing. So, I mean, again, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, if you're not doing all the trades, don't do them both, okay? If I call crowd, okay, which we're going to go over here, we're going to go over this in a minute, that's completely different. Crowd had nothing to do with the market whatsoever at all and had nothing to do with anything, actually. So if, if I'm going to do a crowd and then I call a market, well, that's two completely different trades. So that's that. Also, Rashish is on the letter, and you can see this as well. If I call 17 crowds in the last month, Rajesh, bing, bam, boom. I mean, I don't even know how many did we did. Shelly, how many crowd trades do we do? Shelly's in the letter. That's You don't have to do all the crowds. If I'm calling the 280s, the 275s, the 270s, the 260s, 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 the so that's another thing. So then, then you say, okay, well, I don't, I'm not going to do all the crowds. I'm just going to do one crowd. Because if one crowd works or one crowd doesn't work, then they're probably none of them are going to work. And if you don't want to lose more than one in one ticker, do you know what I'm saying? Then you wouldn't do more than one. Does that make sense, Rashish? So again, I, that's easy to see too. Then the other thing is, um, I just lost my train of thought. We we're talking about crowd. If I call, this is this is for people on the letter because there's some people in the letter here. If I call a trade at seven o'clock in the morning, and I'm just making this up, 
Say I call BA, and I'm just making this up, and I call the BA 165 puts. It's early. Market didn't even open. I call it, you do it, boom, it's going. And then, I don't know, 12 o'clock or 11 o'clock, I call a, this 160 BA puts. The 165s are already up. You're in the trade. You did it at 930. You've got, you could say, oh, you could get out of the 165s by the end of the day or before you do the other one, and then you could do the 160s. Or you don't do the 160s. You let the 165 ride, because again, it's basically the same trade. But if I call a second trade in something later, different strike, later in the day, you're ready in the trade, it's ready up, it's a different strike, it's ready going, I can see it's gonna go to the next number. You don't have to do that, Rashish, or you could book the 165 and then book the money and then do the other one and let it ride. So there's another idea. Um, okay, so that, that was a couple just clean up things for people that are on the newsletter. Anyways, it was a big week. So average return on investment, and I have in here the three losers, which were zero percent return on investment because they all went bust, and we're gonna talk about that as well. So if I take a trade and it never goes right for me, then I lose in it. And if it doesn't, I make money. And again, we're gonna talk about that here. How do I make the decisions based on the gap? It was a huge week. Again, we were in trades and they went in our direction overnight, which is one of the biggest benefits of trading options. To be honest with you, I think that every single person that does my class or, 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 or anyone that does learn my system should do options. Now, that does not mean that you have to do options right away. You can come in September, you can take the class, you can start trade day trading in the room, you can follow me in the room and do the day trades because I call the exact entry stop and everything in the room and the exit. But the options are a newsletter, they get emailed to people. And I think eventually people, if they don't wanna do options right away, need to, need to do them because you're missing these massive, 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 huge moves that happen overnight if you're not doing options with us. And it's very beneficial, especially if you have a small account, to get these kinds of moves because you know, like one of the trades in here, again, we're going to go over was a 700% return on investment. That's, I mean, it's just huge. And you're not going to really get that in a day trade. Um, and so it's really, really important, I think, to be able to capture those overnight moves. And you want to be able to do that. So again, what is my process? I get up in the morning and I rate the gap. This is what you're going to learn from me if you decide you want to trade with me. And again, we're going to go over last week's trades. So last week, well, we again, we were just talking about crowd. So I had called the 240 crowds that expired the night. I called this ridiculously early. I called it on July 30th. This is one we were doing, doing, doing. And again, July 30th is here. Hold on. So we did the 240s. Stock closed here, gap down. Oh, I cut off the side here. I'm sorry about that. But you can see where it was. Open, dropped, fell. Okay. And do, 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 do. Now, this was one that actually, I know I cut off these numbers, but I can pull up the chart in a minute. Actually, let me do that. Um, just hang on one second. Can everybody, if I pull that up here, can you see the chart? Does it come right up or do I have to stop and start it? I'm just doing this because I cut that off. is loading um thomas can't see the charts gene can see it rashish can see it it's loading hold on anyways as i'm as this is loading i'm gonna tell you the crowd put we got in and went to the piggy target which was 200. now again if you're on the letter i double triple star a piggy and you'll see that on the letter and this was the day we did it it was a nice call so it opened at 247.55 fell dropped boop -a -doop -a -doop. actually in the morning on this morning in the pre-market this was at 195 uh, it didn't open there but let's talk about what i do so you come you want to learn you want to do the class you come to new york we learn the whole thing 
part of the nice thing about the live class is in person, one where you're going to get to talk to me and meet me, but I, it's a huge screen in the conference room. It's like 68 inches where I'm going to have my charts up and everything to look at. And again, what do I do? I rate the gap. So this crowd closed at 258.81 on July 29th. And then on July 30th, it opened at 247.55. Now it could have rallied. It didn't, but it could have. And again, I figured this out early in the morning and I decided I wanted to do it. And so we did a put, a put is a short. So this sold off. You actually could have got out of this on the day. If you wanted to get in, get out. Not every trade that I call goes the same day, but this is one you could have got out of. This went so big, so far through the strike and had so much time left. I, I mean, I didn't think it was problematic to hold it. And it actually kept going. All right, let's go back to that in a minute. Okay, so the trade. So it was eight. These weren't cheap. These were not cheap at all. Um, anyways, this cost $8, which is a little pricey. Um, 10 contracts, risk was 8,000, sold at 28. It was a 250% return on investment. And again, if what if you bought one? So if you bought one, it would have cost you $800. You can't get a half of one. So 100 shares, basically, you could have made two grand in this trade. Again, going back to this, here. Okay. So when you're looking to take something, if you're looking to do it, again, I have the targets in the newsletter. You could have got out of it the day I called it. I didn't hold this to the nth degree, um, which I could have, okay? Because we had other strikes going on in this. We had quite a few other, other ones that were going on in this. But again, I sent this trade out at 827 in the morning. It was an hour before the open. And I felt very confident that that was going to go. We also did the 225s. So again, I called this on the same day. Oops, I, I forgot to put that in here. Oh, shoot. I forgot to put the 225 strikes in here, but... Uh, I forgot to put the newsletter in here for this, but I, I called it on the same day. The, I called the 225s that were $4. And so these were cheaper. I forgot to put the letter in here, but it looked like this. And it was the 225s. And again, Rashish was asking about this. So Rashish, I called the 225s and the 240s the same day. So you didn't have to do both. Or what you could have done is do the 240s, get the drop. Then I called the 225s. You could have got out of the 240s this day, and then you could have held the 225s if you wanted to do that. There's another idea. Sorry, I forgot to put the trade in here, but it was, it was cheaper. This ended up being a bigger percentage return on investment because I called it so far away from the strike. I called it so far away. So again, we've had this conversation before. How do you know? How do you know when to hold it? How do you know what it's going to do? Sometimes you don't know. Well, then how do I know? Well, you got to take the train and you let it play out and you see how fast and quick it goes. If I'm calling something $20 away from where the stock is currently trading when I send the trade out, and the, it's the live day or it's almost going to be the open, it's you know 9 o'clock or something like that, I mean, again, to see that something can go that far in advance, that's where you can get these huge return on investment trades because of the fact that you're seeing ahead of time. It's the predictability that the stock is going to not only open and fall, because it has to fall to make money in a put, a put is a short, but that it's going to have the extension. It's going to have the momentum. It's going to go plop, and it's going to go big time. Now, this is not a stock that, I mean, this stock moves pretty big. So for this stock to think the stock can go $20, $30 in a day is not that big of a deal. The stock can go $60 in a day. But again, this type of huge return on investment is a result of taking it so far away from where the stock is currently trading that basically even doing it at the same time as the 240s, again, it was in the 240s to see that it was going to go down in the 220s, 225 area. Again, that's how you're making such a big return on investment. Anyways, then, so this was all this same 8-9 expiration. We did the Microsofts. 
we did the Microsoft 415s. This was Wednesday the 31st, okay? I call this right at the open. Let's look at the chart first. Uh, the Microsoft, the 31st was here, okay? So the stock closed here, gap down, take it over to the right. So I called this right at the open, it was around 420. You could have done the 420s. So I called the 415s. This wasn't cheap either, actually. Uh, but again, this is the stock is priced over $400 a share. Again, if you wanted to day trade it, you could have day traded it. Guess what? You need a margin account then, which is fine. But you see, if you're buying one contract, and I'm just making this up, of the Microsoft, it would cost you, what, $700. And if you wanted to day trade Microsoft, and you would, you know, 100 shares even, or 1,000 shares, you would need times $420 a share, divided by 4 to 1 margin or 10 to 1 margin, depending on how much margin you get at your broker. You see, it's you would have needed a lot more cash to take the position as a day trade rather than a put. So again, this is another reason why I encourage people, even if you want to day trade, to eventually do options because you can trade a very expensive stock like this on the cheap. Again, one contract would have been $700 and we got this move overnight in a gap. I'll go back to the chart in a minute. Sold it at 25, profit was 21,600 with a risk of 12 contracts or 8,400 a 257% return investment. Now let's go back again to the day because this was the 31st. Oops, here's the chart. So this is the day we did it. So stock closed here, gap down. Now, technically this was going in the taily thing here on that day. Again, it had plenty of time to go. If you wanted to kind of scalp it, you could have. It was not cheap though. Okay, then it had a spiky thing here. Then again, this is the next day here. This is a Friday. Stock close here, gap down, fell. You could have got out of it here. You were up more than 100% here if you wanted to just book it. It dropped down. It was $10 in the money through the strike on the Friday. It was around 405. That was more than 100%. And you could have booked the money. You could have just called it a day. If you got this move overnight, Again, this was the bigger move here on the Monday. Why? The stock opened here under 390. This was the day that we have the, we had the Friday to the Monday gap. This was the last week. Okay, remember these are last week's expirations, last week's trades. From the Friday to the Monday, this was the big move. This is where everybody that was in every trade that I had called made a lot of money. Some people were in everything. Some people were in some things. Again, I had booked some of the crowds. Um, how do you place an overnight order for an option? You, you don't do it overnight, you do it during the day. You can only trade options during the day, but you would hold the trade overnight. And that's what I was talking to you about. You did a swing trade the other day, Sabina, where you basically were on cash or two to one margin, and if the trade had gone against you, you could have lost an unlimited amount in that trade. In an option, if you risked $100 or $1,000, if the trade goes against you, that's all that you would have lost. You could do it at a market order, a limit order. It's neither here nor there. But you, you can only do an option during 9.30 to 4. Anyways, again, beautiful move, dropped. Again, that was a put. Now, this was, this was a good one. Uh, so then on August 1st, at 11.06, was was late. We did the Mu 100s. Again, I saw this was going. I saw it was falling. This was the biggest one that we had last week. So this we did Thursday. It, why was this so good? It was dirt cheap. It was $1.60. Again, some of the market trades we've been doing as puts have been very expensive lately. Again, compared to what the market's priced at, the SPY is over $500 a share. It's still cheap when you think about what you're paying for an option versus doing a margin trade. But this was really, really cheap. 160.50 contract sold at 13. Again, this is getting out of it the fifth. This was a 713% return on investment. And again, everybody that did this trade that was in this trade made money. So let's look at the mu chart. 8.1 was here. Stock closed here, gap down, open, dropped. Boom. Mm. So again, take it over. 
So where I called this, it was late. I called it 11 o'clock, that was kind of late. I'm glad I did it, but I saw it was gonna go to 100. And again, we had a whole week to get it there. We didn't need the whole week. Okay, we didn't need the whole week. We got it down. And again, you could have got out here. This was a huge trade here. I don't know what it was. It was well over two, 300% if you got out of it on the second. Again, what is the benefit of doing options? A fixed risk, it's like the insurance where you can only lose what you risk. And you're basically, I don't use stops. If I lose in the trade, I lose in the trade. We're gonna go over the losers here in a little bit. If you're in it and it gaps in your direction, I don't care if it's up or down, whatever, you are up money as soon as you get up in the morning and if it could be through your strike. So again, it could be through the number. So in this case here, where this closed on Thursday, it was Thursday, August 1st, all right? It gapped down here in the morning. It was through the strike on the morning of here. I'm just take it over. You see this? Here's 100, and it was under that. And you had a week left. That was on the second. Okay. So this that was one that went to the piggy target. So again, did I know that would go $15 in the money? No, I didn't. But I thought it would fall. It would have momentum. It would sell off. Remember, what is a put? A put is where it's a short. Okay, so it's got to sell off to make money. Again, just like if you're buying a call, it's got to move up. It's it, That's a long. It's just a different way to do it. Then we did the BA 175s. This BA, this BA, I still really like this BA. In fact, I was looking at that, looking at that earlier today uh, near the close, and I still really like this BA. Uh, this August 1st, I did another late trade. I did the 175 BAs. This was cheap, $2, sold at 12, again, got in it and out of it on the Monday. This was a huge trade, 500% return investment. What if you risked, again, what if you did 10? Just making this up, I didn't have time to do the beginner amounts. What if you risked two grand and you sold at 12, okay? That is a huge amount of money, again, to make in, 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 in an option for somebody to only risk $2,000 in, a, in, a, in an account. It's just for people that are looking to try to, you know, uh, what's the word I'm trying to say, maximize their profits in their, in their trades, um, grow their accounts. Like people that are saying, I wish I had a bigger account, I wish I had a bigger account. You need a couple of these. You need a couple Muse. You need a couple crowds. Oh, here, here was this. This was late in the, this was 1.30. I clipped this today. I still like this BA lower. But anyways, the day that we did it was late. Um, the day was the first here. So again, this was already selling off. I saw it was gonna continue. If I had done it earlier, I, out of the gate, I would have done a higher strike and actually I would have made more. Um, it would have been more expensive but anyways, I saw this was gonna sell off and then it did and then it gapped down and then it sold off again and then this was Friday and this was Monday and take it over and you see where it was. So again, you can't screw the trade like this up. If you get out of it the day I call it, fine, you made money. If you held it overnight, it continued through the strike, it gapped down, it sold off again, you made money. If you held it over the weekend, again, it gapped down, you made money. So again, the only thing you would have done is it not do it, that you would have screwed up if you didn't do it. But again, when I'm saying pace yourself, if I'm calling selective things that have nothing to do with the market, there's a different reason for that type of trade that has something to, that has nothing to do with the market. Like we did Starbucks today. Starbucks had nothing to do with the market today. We just did it. It was a good gap. Then we did INTC. This actually was earnings. It was Friday the 2nd. We did this at 8.50. This was a bugger though. This should have continued here. We'll look at this chart in a minute. 175, again, stock wasn't that expensive. More, uh, the option I don't think was that expensive. When you have something that's on the cheap, again, I got out of this with 49%. So I, I wished I would have made more in this, but it was through the gap on the day of the market and everything was down. You gotta get out. You just, you gotta get out. I gotta have everything here then on that Monday because we had to move overnight. I still think this is lower too. I don't, this is a problem with the market. Again, the market's lifting and this is stuck in an area, 
but I definitely, definitely still like this lower, but this is, you know, cheap on the cheaper side to do as an option. Again, we day traded this too. Um, but again, go back and look at the gap. So the stock closed up here around 28 and change, opened down here around 22. This was the day that we did it, open dropped. You could have got out of it here. It bounced too quick for me to get out of it here. Got the gap down in the market, out, done, boom. If you didn't get out of it here, you could have got out of it here, or you could have got out of it here. You had a couple days to still get out of it before it expired. But again, we got the move right. Then we did the Amazon 165s. This was Friday the 2nd. I thought these were pretty cheap. $4, again, sold at 10, sold it on the Monday. Again, that Monday that we had that gap down and we were in all those puts, if you were in them, and again, if you're on the letter and you get the move in your direction overnight with the market in the gap, whether it's a put and we get a gap down or whether we're in calls and you get the gap up, you must, you, you're getting out that day. Like whether you want to get out right away is in the open or you want to wait a couple of minutes is fine. You're, you're getting out. Like again, the point of trading is not to hold everything to the last day of the expiration, even if it's up, even if it's through the strike, things can reverse. You've seen that in the market. And it's also not to hold and squeeze every penny out of, of something. Again, I could have made money, more money in some of the crowds. This, this is about consistently having more winners and losers and booking money. There are some trades here that we did that didn't move as much as I wanted. INTC was one of those. Then there were some that I was surprised and went bigger than I thought. And again, Mu was one of those too. So you don't know. It all evens out, but you've got to be able to do the trades. But this here we did, this closed here gap down. Here was the Amazon, got the drop. Here was Friday, Monday, boom. And again, what's crazy, crazy, crazy about this, although I don't know why anybody would have waited on this. If you actually got out of this on the close on Monday, it was still $5 in the money. The trade still would have been up, which is ridiculousness. It closed around 160. We did the 165 puts on the Friday before. You literally still would have gotten out of that with profit if you totally screwed up the exit. But again, if you get up in the morning, you must check your trains and see what you're in. That's something, something that, that you need to be doing. doing. Anyways, we also did CVX, which is oil. We've been watching that. We've been watching that a lot lately. We did this on Friday. This was okay priced. $3, sold at 6, 100% investment. We did it Friday. We get out on Monday. Oil is very volatile. Very volatile. Again, I thought this would have gone more. Then it did, what are you gonna do? We could have gotten this in this early. Here was the gap. Stock closed here, gap down, fell off a cliff. Stock closed here, gap down, boom. This is the day we did the 150s, and then poof, this was the day with the market. Again, sometimes oil goes the opposite direction of the market. You saw that the market's been rallying the last two days, and oil's been kind of selling off a little bit. I don't think that's always the case, though. It used to be years ago that oil would be the opposite direction of the market. Now that's not even the case. Again, this has to do with a lot of things that are going on, on overseas, but you know, it was there, we saw the gap and we did it. Then we did the QQQs 445s. Again, we did this Friday before the open. I sent the trade, you can't do the trade till the open. These have been pricey, but again, still cheaper than doing a margin trade. Again, we did this Friday. We did the 445s, it was 300% return investment. Where was the market? Monday on the 5th. So we bought the puts here and everybody that did them, nobody got out because the trades didn't really go. In fact, we did it and it dropped and backed up. So everybody got this move, because, unless you didn't do the trade because the fact is that there was no reason to get out of this here. So anyways, I called the 445s. It opened at 450, I could have done a higher strike and a gap down here in the morning, take it over. This was around 425, slightly under 425 in the morning of the fifth. Again, that was the weekend scuttlebutt of everything that was happening, you know, and something could still happen this week. I mean, you hear the news all the time, this thing, that thing, whatever's happening with Iran and Israel. But that was that one weekend, we had the dramatic news and then we had that massive gap down in the market. But I called the trade on Friday. It had a week to go and you wouldn't have got out of it because it didn't do anything yet. And then we did the spy the same day. So again, Rashish was asked about this. You wouldn't do the cues in the spy. You would do one. You would do one. This was pretty much the same price. 450 sold at 22. This was 389%. This was 
roughly about the same trade, roughly about the same cost, a little bit cheaper, had a big move. So this was the 535s on the second here. Stock close here, gap down, take it over. I called it right closer to where it was trading. And then it fell, and then here was the move in the morning. It was like right around 510. Open a little bit above 510. That was on the Monday. Again, even if you exit that trade in a horrible, horrible, horrible exit into the close on Monday the 5th, it would have been in the money. It closed around 515, and we were in the 535 puts. So this literally made everybody's pretty much month that move. Again, you wouldn't have gotten out of this here. The trade wasn't up that much on the Friday. It was, you know. And again, on a Friday, it's rare that you get something going all day on a Friday, especially in the summer. In the fall, it's a little bit different. It's very important, I think, to trade in the morning, get in, get out, and be done. Again, holding, holding, holding into the afternoon or trading the afternoon or Friday in the summer is not really what we do. So then I did this. So then on Monday, I did the 165 BAs. It never went right. So this was one of the losers then last week. So I was very cautious about the market last week on Monday. It lifted. I thought it was going to lift. It did. But I like BA lower. I still like BA lower. But this one bust. Again, here was the trade. We did it. So we did it here. Then it looked good. Then it looked great. Then it started to fall. Then it started to go. It actually was through the strike. It, this actually was up at one point, but I didn't get out of it. I didn't get out of it. It reversed. Poof. And I lost in this trade. So again, I will take a trade and lose in it completely if it never goes right. Mu is the same thing. We did another mu. We did then the lower mu. This went bust too. This actually didn't even attempt to go even at all, except for this one day it started to sell off. And then again, the market rallied. The market rallied. Mu goes with the market. It went boom, boom, boom. And that was it for the mu. So we lost in the mu. And then CBX, similar thing. This didn't fall through either, even though I still think this has a drop to go in it as well. Again, this is oil. So we did this on that same day on the Monday. Actually, this was up slightly. I think some people did get out of this with money. This was up slightly, but I didn't get out of it. I just didn't think it was up enough. It wasn't even enough 50%. And I lost in that completely. And that was the whole week. So again, we had 13 trades. We had three losers and we had 10 winners, which is 77% win ratio. If you're, if you're taking your risk and your risk is on average the same, you were up for the week. We had some huge winners. Now, what if you had risked more in the three losers than the 10 winners? Well, I don't know. You could have been upside down. With some of the trades that were so big, you still probably would have made money. But it just goes to show you, again, you have to risk the same amount or close to the same amount in the trades. Danny, I'm talking to you. I see you here. If you had said, I'm going to risk all of my buying power in the 85 new puts, and that's the one that doesn't work, you see how... It's all upside down then, you know? Or something else I was going to say and I forget. Oh, the market. Any other questions here? Um, I'm just going to pull up the market here in a minute. Any other questions about anything I just said before I say something else here? talking to myself Rashish is good anybody else Rashish did I clear up some of these things for you Sabina is there Sabina's coming to the class in New York she's already signed up all right so when was the last time the last time that the market made brand new all-time highs like, when was the last time where you could really, you know, say, ooh, this market's fabulous. Let's just go back. It was a month ago. It was more than a month ago. So, 710, 503.52 was the high, and then 503.28 was July 11th. Feels like a long time ago. It was basically a couple days after July 4th, and here we are in a couple weeks. It's Labor Day. That's how fast the summer's gone. Today's the 13th, so that was more than a month ago. You can see here that despite the rally today, which I didn't participate in, we went long Starbucks, but I didn't go long the market. Even still, you can see how far we are off the highs. You see it? Let's look at 
the spine. So earnings season, I don't think it would affect the market is pretty much over in the next couple of weeks. Yes, we have earnings, we have this thing, that thing, whatever, Cisco's this week, but for the most part, every single Ooh. earnings that's out between now and the end of the month has nothing to do with the market, it's not gonna affect the market. So anything that's gonna affect the market, rallying, falling, gapping, up, gapping, down, is gonna be data that specifically is going to be directed at the possibility of lowering rates or not lowering rates and how fast and whether they're gonna do it this year or not, and that is on everyone's minds. And one other thing, which we discussed in the room today, the election. So it is less than 90 days away from the election. So do I think the market goes back up to the highs before the election? Absolutely not. So where, what are our possibilities here? Well, we don't have that many. If we're not gonna go up to the high in the next 80 some days or whatever we have, we looked it up this morning, I forget how many days, what could we do? We could fall or stay in a, in a range. Let's look at the spine. So it was July 16th. July 16th was 565.16. Spine definitely is stronger than the Qs over on the rally, but we're still nowhere near the highs even after today's rally. All right, let me go back. Any questions about anything I said? So again, the focus is to make money it doesn't matter if you do day trades or options using my system. I like to do both. And today I wanted to talk about options because you can capture these overnight moves and options, which can really help you grow your account very quickly. I don't do options every day. I do day trades usually every day. Today, yesterday we didn't do any day trades, so there wasn't any day trades that set up. But you have to be more patient with options. And some people have difficulty doing that. Um, you know, when I started trading, I was doing day trades. I could call I could call an option and it could not go for a week. Um, and again, some people don't like that. They want to know exactly at four o'clock, exactly, exactly where they're at with their PL. And options just don't work like that. And again, with the volatile market, as tricky as it is, that's just you have to be willing to be patient. And I say if you're not, and if you want to kill the trade right away when it doesn't doesn't go your way, the second you take it, then you probably should back off your risk or do less trades however you want to look at it, to keep your risk down. But the whole point of trading is for making money. Everybody has a different reason for doing this. Some people are retired and they want to make extra money because things cost too much now. Some people want to do it for a full-time job. They hate their job. That was my reason. I hated my job. I wanted to do it as a full-time job. I didn't know what I was doing. I had to work two jobs while I was trying to figure it out. It was a long road. Now I just do this. But again, Having the long range goal of wanting to do this and knowing what that goal is, is extremely important because sometimes it can happen overnight for people. They take the class and learn what to do. They're making money right away as they're singing and dancing. Some people have a learning curve. They have, don't know what they're doing. Uh, it takes a while to learn and to figure it out. It's a process, but by asking me questions, me being here for people, being in the room every day, it helps people learn. One of the ladies that's in the room, she's not here right now. She's not doing options yet. She's going to. She's going to start doing them, but probably not till next year. She never traded in her life. She's a housewife. She is in the room every day. Her name is Allison. She started in a demo. She was on a demo for a while. And then she started to go live. And now she's making money day trading. And again, she hasn't started doing options yet because she just got the day trading down. She did the class in November of 2023. So again... She did it, but she, it's taken her a long time because she never traded before. And so she only felt comfortable starting on a demo. And that's just, you know, everybody has to go through their same process. I think when, by the time people come to me, sometimes people have been through the ringer and they've been doing different things and they've lost money and they've taken classes and they want immediate results and they want to know everything today and they want to make a million dollars tomorrow. They don't want any losing trades and whatever and and they and they may be unrealistic in the sense that they want to take a small amount of money and risk it and make xyz the most important thing is that you're on the right path you're learning the system and the most important thing is that you're showing consistent results that could mean taking 10 steps forward and two steps back five steps forward and one step back that's the most important thing because if you're on this topsy turvy turvy roller coaster of losing money trading and using systems that just flat out do not work for the last 10 5 15 20 years however long you've been trading 
The most important thing is learning a system that actually works and getting it, understanding it, and then seeing it, being with me in the room every day and then seeing the trades that I just went over now for this just the whole week. And then saying, yes, I this is coming together. I totally can see it. When she says, you know, dream target crowd 200, I can see it's going to go there too. And then it's a process where you're going through it and you're working it out in your mind how much money you feel comfortable risking and holding the train. And there is no really black and white answer because everyone is in a different financial position. Some people just, some people want to trade and they say they're fine with risk, but they're really not as fine as they say that they are. <laughs> and I, and I'm, I'm speaking as someone that spends time talking to people like you people here every single day. So, you know, I have, like, I, people say, oh, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that much risk. Do ba do ba do. But then if they take a trade and the trade is down right away, they freak out, even if the trade goes on to work. <laughs> and I said, well, you probably have too many contracts or you have too much risk on or you don't understand something. Let's go over it. And again, it's, it's a balancing act when you're trading and you're risking money. Why? Because you can't not risk money to make money. That's the whole point. This is also why trading is something that is a very small select group of people that are good at this. To be honest with you, you you almost have to have the personality where taking risk and the possibility of making a lot of money is actually really exciting to you. Therefore, you're willing to take the risk. Now, the risk cannot be risk for risk's sake. Okay, the risk has to be it's that you rated the gap and it is a calculated risk. And you have it all pre-planned in the morning before the open, whether it's at 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m. You say, I did every, I did all the pre-work, the rating system. This is all the stuff you learn in the class. That's the confirmation to give you the conviction that you're. this is worth taking the risk. This is worth putting the money on the trade because I rated it and it rates 20 points or 21 points or whatever it is. So you're not just taking blind risk. You're not saying, I'm going to go long the market because Kramer says that uh, after today's number, they're going to lower rates 1.5% between now and the end of the year. That, that makes no sense. Nobody knows that. And that's not a strategy whatsoever at all. Now, again, the whole life, you could have gone long the market today because the market gapped up. I get it. It wasn't a good gap for me. It wasn't a good bullish gap for me to buy the market today. It very well could have failed. Again, so I don't go long every gap up. I don't short every gap down. But I utilize my system. And in doing that, that helps weigh, again, and balance out the risk. Because until you understand what to do, you know, you have to go through the process of rating the gap. And that's why, like, like someone, and I'm just using Allison as an example, <clears throat> who never traded before, she went through the process and traded on a demo to make sure she did understand it to convince herself that she could do it and press the buttons. Uh, Chris is taking the opposite of Kramer. I, I don't watch Kramer. I just, I just, I just happen to say that because I know, I know he's on CNBC in the morning, which I sometimes have Bloomberg on. Sometimes I have CNBC on in the morning. Sometimes I flip on Fox Business. But it was really hilarious today. Somebody on Fox Business this morning did say that they that they were. 100% that they were going to drop rates 1.25 basis points between now and the end of the year. And I'm like, what is this guy on? Like, what is this guy smoking? Like, well, I can't believe anyone would even think that at this point. Not that it matters. Not that it matters. But, um, but anyways, I mean, pundits that are on TV giving their opinion are not active traders, number one. And number two, they get paid to be on TV and give commentary. Whether they're right or wrong is, you know, again, taking financial advice and deciding to do trades from people that are getting paid to give financial commentary, they very often flip. If the market starts selling off like a hot cake between now and the end of the year, everyone, all of them will be bearish. So it's you take it for what it's worth. You, you have to understand what's going on in the price action and the chart, and you have to believe in it yourself, and you have to understand why you're doing it, and you can't take ideas from strangers. And, and I may be a stranger to you, but that's the benefit of coming to New York. If you come to New York and meet me, I won't be a stranger to you anymore, number one. It makes it more real for you to take the class with me in person, and I'm going to teach you my system. 
so that you understand why I think crowd is going to fall or why I think Starbucks is going to rally today or why I think XYZ is going to happen. You know, you will go through and do it yourself. Starbucks was a good gap and we went long Starbucks and we made money in Starbucks. And that's what we did on that. And again, it's so rare that I would go long. Uh, we can pull it up at the end. Any other questions? So again, you know, we're in a world right now where you have to empower yourself. If you're an independent person, if you're independent minded, if you want to work for yourself, you will learn a complete system. It's called the Golden Gap. You will learn it from me. And again, it's a class that I teach normally online, but I'm doing a live class in New York City. This is a one-time only special event. I've never done this before. I'm not planning on doing it again because it was a lot of work to set up the class and you know the space and everything, but I'm excited to do it. It's gonna be great. People are coming. It's September 20th, 21st, and 22nd. The class tuition is more expensive than the online class because obviously I have to pay people to staff it and then rent the space. It's $12,999 and the benefit of this is you will learn in person from me. It's a three-day class. The online class is normally a two-day class and you get all the subscriptions with the cost of the live class which will help benefit you until the end of 2025 so you'll get all my trades so if you want to stay in the room and in the letter you wouldn't have to pay anything again until january 2026 but i really am excited about teaching people in person again it's on a massive screen we're going to look at my charts and then of course i have all of the worksheets that we're going to do where we're going to rate gaps together after we learn it like you know on a piece of paper and i think again i'm a very old-fashioned person when i trade i have my sheets and my notebook and my ratings and when people come they'll see that when they learn with me face to face sometimes online is great and that's why i do it it's convenient once a month but i do think people learn better in person i i think that just from having taught people now since i started the business which was 13 years ago you know and i've never done a live class but i'm in such a such a fabulous place right now that i said i have to do this once and see what the interest is and see if people are interested in coming and people are. So it gives you an opportunity to come and learn from me and meet me and, you know, make it real. Because, again, I think a lot of people, um, you know, just after the trading for a while, they kind of forget the fact that trading is something that's real and trading success is real. And then you'll meet other traders. Uh, let me pull up the Starbucks. Brad. Whoa, look at that invisible tick. That wasn't there earlier. Do you see that? Whoa, 509. Does everybody see that? Whoa, that wasn't there earlier. Look at that. It's not in the queues. Yeah, it's gone, but you saw it. It was there. It's gone now. Um, all right, let's go back to Starbucks. Chris, you've been following me for a while. I don't know if you're ever going to join or sign up. I know you've been following me for years. Um, who else? Any other questions? I see some new people. I see some old faces. Rajesh, do you have any other questions? Shelly, how are you doing? Sabina, I think you should wait to do options until you do the class in September in New York. Um, let's look at Starbucks. Um, yeah, I mean, again, I, I had no interest in holding anything really that long to the upside. And we talked about this and we talked about this. Um, let me just figure this out here quickly. But if you, um, if you're still in this, it's pretty much up slightly tonight, but I talked about this and I talked about this and Rashish, I, I emailed you that I thought you should get out of this today if you made a move. I don't know if you did, but you could have, you could have done this trade in the morning and you could have get out of it today. How to take a proper exit. Well, first of all, you can always ask me. Um, you did get out of this. 
Here, we'll go over the day trade and then we'll go over the option. Uh, first of all, Rashish, I told you to get out of this today because I think you've got a bad price in it, number one. And number two, um, you have a lot of other trades on that you're waiting to go. And I thought it was important for you to book money today. So that's that. I also thought 95 was a good target and it went through 95. It went basically to 96. So, I mean, it was good enough. And the market is an unknown. We have a big number tomorrow morning, 830. This whole thing could turn around. I don't know. We could continue higher, but what if we don't? So again, you're at the mercy of something where you're giving up the possibility of profits that could, you could completely give back and something that you could book money on a Tuesday. Just book it and do it. You know, this isn't a crowd trade. This isn't like, like, this is just like a trade. Anyways, we did this in the morning. We got in and poof, we got right out of the day trade. We were in this, I, I had a good exit in this in, for the morning. This took a long time to make the move later on, but we did a quick trade in this, in and out as a margin trade, as a day trade, and then we did the calls. And then it went. And it actually, you could have got out of it in the morning. You could have done the option, got out of the option in the morning. You could have. And then it went a second leg, and you could have got out of it into the close. CMG, I didn't look at it all. That was news. It wasn't earnings, but I can look at it. I didn't. I didn't look at this at all. Um, gosh, I haven't looked at this in a hundred years. Uh, this is the one where the stock split. I haven't looked at this since the stock split. To be honest with you. This was news, so I don't think I would have been crazy about this. Let's see if there was a play here. If you're asking me if I would be in this right now, the answer is no. <laughs> I wouldn't have been in it. I wouldn't have done an option in it, so that's that. Um, if there was a day trade in it, I don't know, but you could have day traded it here. It looks like there was a setup. I don't know what this would have rated, but just right off the cuff, Looking at the daily chart, I'm not crazy about it. Um, I don't know what it would have rated. If it would have rated 20 points or more, I could have watched it to short, but I like Starbucks was the best gap today. This did have a day trade set up in it, but I wouldn't have done an option in it because I don't think I thought it would have continued, and I don't think this continues. And you definitely can't be long this, but I wouldn't be short this now either. And I think the chart, to be honest with you, in this is kind of a messed up. If the market's up tomorrow, this will be up. But if the market's down, I don't even know if this is going to fall right. I wouldn't be in this at all. But if you day traded this morning and shorted it, you made money. Right. The CEO is moving to Starbucks. That was it. That was the news. It was like, eh, Starbucks was a better play. Starbucks was a better play. And Starbucks still could go to 100. Dream Target and Piggy Target and Starbucks is 100. I just don't, I didn't want to hold that to a piggy. But it certainly could go there. I haven't looked at this since the stock split. That's kind of funny looking at it now. Um, what was the other one we were looking at? HD. This didn't do anything right. I'm glad we didn't do it. This was a mess, so... Any questions from anyone about anything at all? Any questions about the class in New York or gaps? Again, no online class this month. The next online class is not till the end of October. This is a good time to come though and start training. We've been doing extremely well. I don't know what we're gonna do tomorrow, we'll see. I expect the volatility in the market to continue. Again, if you do the September class, you will be set for the next earnings season, which starts the first week of October. So again, the class is the end. It's actually the first week of fall. And then the following, the last earnings season of the year starts the first week of October. Again, right now we're at the end of earnings season. And we still have trades. You know, Starbucks was a gap, but it wasn't earnings, it was news. Uh, the classes in New York City and Manhattan, yes. Yep. Yeah. One more question, you give a trade at 920 and the stock, hold on. I give a trade at 920. And the stock already opens with a big move. How do you decide whether it's still good to enter? Um, what do you mean? 
Starbucks. Well, I don't know what you mean by a big move. So again, if you're like, oh crap, I didn't want to do this, you could have done a higher strike. Now, I that would have worked. You could have done the 95s. If you did the 95s, Rashish, you could have done that. So you could have bought the 95 calls if you didn't want to do the ones I sent in the morning. If that's what you're saying, because you're like, it's already in the money and that bothers you, then do the next strike if you want. But that, that doesn't happen all the time. That doesn't happen all the time. But you can always adjust. But I don't think these were that expensive. If it's something that's out of your price range, you know, you say, oh crap, I can't afford this one. I'm gonna do the other one. That's okay. It went went through the it went through ninety five. You could have done the ninety fives. You could have done the hundreds. The hundred you could have bought the hundred calls out of the gate. They would be up. But you know, and again, this is this could very well go to hundred. I I wouldn't be surprised if it does. But I had no interest whatsoever at all in holding anything long at all. Um, there was something else I was gonna say and I forget. Anyways, if you're thinking about signing up for the live class and you want to call me and ask me questions, you're more than willing to do that. I'll put my phone number in the room. If you do want to sign up, just don't wait too late because there's limited space in the room and also you have to book travel. And the faster ahead that you book it, um, the better price you're going to get. Oh no, I think I screwed up the number. It's 929-3200-0427, sorry. Uh, there was something else I was gonna say. We're talking about the market. I don't remember. It's The tough thing is with trading is that There's so many things out there. And how do I know this? Because I go to all these webinars. Like I'm not doing any webinars till, till September now because of the class and stuff. But I just did one like two or three weeks ago. Like I hear the tail end sometimes of the people when I'm logging in that I go on after the next person. There's just so many things out there. It's like, and I'm on all these emails with all these other things too. Does everything work? No. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. And it's just, it's like, it's the luck of the draw that when you start trading, part of the process is figuring out what works and what doesn't and going through that process. Now, for me, it was a different process because I did one class and then I said, I didn't learn how to make money with this class. I'm going to figure it out myself. That was a very long, hard road. That was an expensive road for me to travel, but that's always a road that people can take, but you really need to bankroll yourself to do that. So even though you might take classes, realize that you didn't learn anything, waste money on the class, lose money in trains, it's a process of elimination once you go through it and then you find and encounter someone like me and say, wait a minute, this makes sense. Because again, many people are doing the opposite of me. They're doing gap fills. They're buying dips and all kinds of things like that is not what I do. And it does not consistently work to make money in the market. And again, I don't short every bearish gap down or go long every gap up. It's selective. It's selective process, looking, trying to find one good thing a day. But, you know, it is a, it is a road that you're traveling on to try to connect with the right person, the right teacher, the right mentor, and the right strategy that's going to work for you. And it's a process. No one decides that they want to trade, takes one class and starts making money immediately. That's very, 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 very rare. So, you know, just know that if you've had these trials and tribulations and ups and downs, you're not alone. Everybody goes through that. If you want to make it, then you go through it until you find someone and you start making money and then it hits. If you quit, you definitely will not make it. 
So the idea is not to quit. And there's definitely lots of things out there and a lot of them don't work. And that's just the nature of the market. And that's what makes the market. I mean, again, it'll be really interesting to see here what happens with this market. Wednesday, we have data and Thursday, we have data and Friday, we have a number, but it's late. It's 10 o'clock on Friday, but we have pre-market numbers the next two days. It's definitely going to affect the market. And a lot of retail traders right now are along this market, and I am not one of them. So it's going to be really interesting to see where this market goes between now and Friday. So I hope the way that I'm reading this here is correct. We'll see, because we're coming off a really, really nice week last week, and we want to get another move here. Any questions from anyone about anything at all? Brad, how long have you been following me? Here is my email. Rashish, you're going to be okay. You got out and booked the money in Starbucks today. And that was the right thing to do. And Rashish, what you need to do is take it, book it, take it, book it, take it, book it, take it, book it. You need to get taking trades and booking them. And that's what you need to get in a groove doing. But I will call you tomorrow. Any other questions from anybody else? Danny, are you there? Do you have any questions? Danny is thinking about coming to New York. The one class I did was a live class, actually. It wasn't online. It was a live class I did in New York when it was when I did it, it was so long ago. It was a good experience. I met people and and uh, and it definitely was a good way to start out because it made trading real for me in that moment. That was my first experience where I met real people and it was real for me and the teacher and everything. It's just that what I learned from that person it was a good foundation of based on technical analysis, but it didn't teach me how to make money. But I knew I could. I knew that there was a way to make money in the market. I knew it was possible. I didn't think it was impossible. Despite the odds and the stats that are out there that you, it's impossible for people to make money and more people lose and everything else, I still considered myself someone that was smart enough that I could figure it out. But it definitely took me longer than I thought. And I had no idea what I was doing when I started. And it was just a process of winning and losing and trading and going back and forth. And it was, it was very difficult. But once I figured it out, I was just, you just proceed. And I think it's the same way with people that are trading with me for a long time. I mean, I have people with me now for more than 10 years, which says a lot. They don't, they don't need to be trading with me anymore. They could trade by themselves, but they want to hear what I have to say. They're making money with me. The cost of the room and everything a year over year carries what, you know, covers more than what they, they earn more than that being with me. And they want to hear my analysis every day. Rashish, you've got to get in a habit formation for a couple of weeks and you've got to get yourself situated and then hope hopefully you can do the online class at the end of the year or something like maybe in December or something you, you have a lot to learn Rajesh you're like like some of the things what did you want to do you wanted to you wanted to buy something before we go what was the stock you wanted to buy I said what the heck well you wanted to buy something and I said please don't PLTR, was that it? Let's look at it. Rashish wanted to go long something, or no, you were in something that you took a big hit in that was not a trade I called. Was this it? Was this a one? You took a big hit in something. Was this it? Oh, this is the one you asked about. What was the trade that you were in before you met me that you lost in that you took a big hit? Look at this. It's taking forever here. Are you still in this? I have no idea what you did with this. Did you do this trade? Didn't you do this trade? Are you were thinking about doing it? Oh, you were in an option and it expired and you lost?
Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what you're doing here with this. There's plenty of other things to do that are a heck of a lot better than this. Even if you thought this was higher, there's like a million things better to do than this. So I don't I don't know why you initially got in this if it was some kind of newsy thing or something. Well, it it rallied because of the market though. Look at this. This is the last week and so is the market. So this did have a rally, but it was because of the market. But there's a heck of a lot better things to do. If you really, 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 really want to go long something, here, we'll go back over to where we were today. If you were like, I have to go long, I can't live without going long. This is a better long here. This Starbucks. You stopped doing your own trades and you're only doing mine. Yeah, I think that's probably what you should do for now. And then you're going to do the class eventually and then you'll learn what to do. But you see how this is a lot better? You only have so many trades. You only have so much money. You can't take everything that's out there everywhere, every idea, everything. You know, so it's like you have to, this is the whole point of doing the rating system is narrowing it down to very, very, very selective. On a day like today when the market gaps up and rallies, you probably could have gone long a million things, a trillion things, and they're not all good trades, and they're not all good longs, and people did them anyways, and they're in them anyways, and they're in them overnight in swing trades and in options, which is crazy because if the market falls, they're all going to lose. So again, if the market falls, like we did on the day when we gapped down from Friday to Monday when we just had this past week that we just reviewed, then everything sells off too. So unless you're an expert at reading the market, which even I, as good as I am reading the market, even I don't get it right all the time. I absolutely don't. I may not get it right this week. I don't know. We'll see. It's only Tuesday. But the fact is, it's almost impossible to get the market right all the time because the market is at the mercy of things that happen that are based overseas and other countries that are open and trade in markets that are open before even the pre-market starts, even for the U.S. And then, of course, economic data and all kinds of things. You're better off trading specific stocks. We occasionally do the market. We do not do the market every day. We don't even do the market every week. So, I mean, again, you've got to get selective, selective, selective. That's how you're also going to improve your odds. You really like the crowd. You could take one beautiful, fabulous, fabulous chart and just make money in it until it until it's until you can't anymore <laughs> until you're say poof it's done um do you get the stocks that gap it looks like PLTR had some nice gaps do you scan you can get finding gaps if that's what you're asking me you can get a million places you can buy a scanner you can, like I said, you can watch the TV in the morning. They have the tickers. They talk about everything that is, has earnings or is gapping every morning on any of the channels. So finding gaps is not a big deal. That's easy. Almost everything actually gaps, to be honest with you. It's rating the gap. That's what you're going to learn from me to find which stock is going to fall or rally because, again, Almost everything was gapping up this morning. How did I know Starbucks was a good gap? I rated it. But again, I also looked at HD. But HD changed from the time that it opened and had earnings and reported, it flipped. It didn't look the same. It's rare that I would rate something at seven o'clock in the morning and have to go back and re-rate it before the open, but I had to do that in HD. And that was a bugaboo. And then we didn't do it. And then we did the Starbucks because I prefer to short. I would have preferred to do HD. So finding gaps is not hard. Finding gaps that are going to be what I call a golden gap that's going to work in the direction of the gap and also have a large momentum move. That's what you learn from me. Because again, you could rate or you could see a thousand gaps every morning. They're not all going to go in the direction of the gap. And they're also not all going to go with the market, but a lot of them will. But you know, the market could gap up tomorrow, like I said, and fall. We can have data tomorrow morning at 8.30. Let's say this last thing while everybody go. We can be up tomorrow morning. I'm just making this up. I have no idea. I'm making this up completely. We could be here. We could open here and then go poo and fall. So again, you can't go long every gap up and you can't short every gap down.
if that if it was that easy, there'd be you just make billions of dollars every second. That's right, stock selection is key. But if you find one good one, you can stay on it and on it and on it and on it. And even Mew, we did that with the Mew. And we did that, we did that with BA. I could have I could have done them out another week. I could have done both I could have done those Mews and that BA out another week, but I didn't. Anyways, good lecture tonight. If you're interested in the class in New York, email me at melissathestockswish.com or call me. And that's it. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful evening. You're welcome.